So embrace the gloom. That's what your notes say. That's what you guys walk around in the office at Payne Capital Management and say, I guess. Uh, what does that mean? Um, well, ultimately, you know, just with the, with the negative sentiment and all the gloom and the, the bad news out there, um, you know, there are a couple bright spots. Number one, valuations have come down closer to historical averages. You know, S&P right now is trading uh, at a four multiple of just over 16 times below the five and 10 year average. Um, so, you know, we think it's a good time to be buyers in the market and be in the market. Um, and we also still have earnings growth forecast at over 10% this year and over 7% next year. So when you expect things to get maybe a little better at some point, um, what's your timing? I mean, how do you expect, obviously expect some choppiness too, right? Sure. Um, but we do see signs that inflation is cooling and moderating. You know, the break even on treasuries uh, five years out is about 2.7%. Um, we do see, you know, crude oil prices are coming down, commodities prices are coming down, plus what the Fed is doing. Um, and markets love certainty. So midterms later this year, going to give certainty about who's elected and likely to provide more gridlock, which will be good for markets. So, you know, these things are impossible to time. It's that kind of that old adage, you know, it's not timing the market, but it's time in the market. So we're really just telling our clients to, you know, hold the course and try and keep everyone invested. Yeah, I understand, I understand that. Um, that being said now, any thoughts on big tech? Because we have a lot of tech names reporting this week. Any thoughts on the group overall? Um, well, I mean, that's that's one area of the economy where you're seeing, you know, some layoffs. I think the inflation and higher interest rates is hurt, definitely hurting, you know, their cash flow and, and the value of those stocks. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, what happens with earnings. Um, but I think, you know, the market as a whole, definitely optimistic. But, you know, big tech, we may see um, a little bit of a pullback and, um, you know, bring some of those numbers down to earth. So do you have sectors that you like more than others? Um, sure, yeah, we really like uh, value sectors. So if you think about cyclicals, financials, energy, um, and really like small caps, you know, talking about valuations, they're trading at a really deep discount to the large cap peers um, and even historical measures. So, um, you know, the old adage, buy low and sell high. Um, we, we think that's a good place to be right now. Wait, let's go through those one by one. You said cyclicals and small caps. Why those two areas? Um, well, as I said, small caps are offering really attractive valuations. Um, they're trading at a pretty deep discount. And we think that markets and the economy is going to improve over the next few years. Um, so that's likely to have a bigger benefit. If you think about, you know, a boat and water, um, any movement is going to be much more impactful on the smaller boat than the larger ship. So any you know, increase in revenue, um, the profitability is going to affect their bottom line more significantly. Um, and also, you know, with an accelerating and improving economy, I think that benefits um, cyclicals like value value names, um, which are also trading at a deep discount, you know, relative to growth or, or tech, for example. Yeah, as we've seen, obviously, rates have uh, fluctuated, right? Mortgage rates jumped, they pulled back. Uh, the 10-year bond was above 3%, now it's below 3%. Um, can you tell me about banks? that fit in your realm there, the cyclicals? Um, well, you know, I, if you if you look at some of the bank's earnings, um, they obviously were, were getting hit a little bit um, over the last few, week, few weeks, but they did really signal um, strength in consumers. Um, if you look at, I think, mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan's call in particular, um, consumer spending was up about 15%. Um, so I do think that there are some signs there pointing to, you know, positives in the economy moving forward. Um, we still do have yeah. really strong household and consumer, I'm sorry, household and corporate balance sheets. Um, so, you know, if we are in or do go into recession, we think it's likely to be mild and that, you know, we're really in the best shape to deal with that moving forward. Yeah, let's talk about the Fed a little bit because tomorrow's the big day, right? We're expecting three quarters, uh, 75 basis points. Um, you know, I really can't wait to hear what they say may come after that. You said if they start to say that monetary policy is really working, what kind of language are you looking for? And you said it could be good for stocks. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the 75 basis point hike is really baked in, but a lot will probably depend on what their guidance looks like. Um, you know, as your uh, last guest, Ben, mentioned, they're not really going to have any activity in, in August and won't have another meeting until September. Um, but. You know, we do have, as I said, we have those commodities prices and oil prices coming down. So that's naturally bringing inflation down. Um, the Fed is going to 
most likely do this three quarter of a percentage rate hike tomorrow, um, which should, um, you know, help pool inflation pressures and worries as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I think they're likely to have a wait and see approach and see how that all plays out over the next month. But um, I think it's very likely that they'll be able to really slow down that, that pace of hikes as we see inflation start to naturally come down, which is going to benefit sentiment, consumers, and ultimately the market.